So first and foremost, thank you so much, uh, Tejia, for taking the time to uh, talk to me today about uh, the amazing work that you are doing. It's really, really great. I've been uh, following up on your website and things. And, you know, it's great that you've, you're coming from a professional acting background, that you're giving back so much and empowering people across the board in, uh, in your space. So first and foremost, I think, the, the, the big question is, you've spent uh, the first, you know, you, well, you've started your career as an actor, as an actress, actor, you know, uh, whichever word you prefer. Uh, how, <laughs> how, did, <laughs> how did that actually happen? Um, and what was that like? Yes. So I, you know, I jokingly say, Bilal, that I'm a recovering actress and a fully functioning voiceover artist. So <laughs> because as an actress, you know, you really get rejected a lot. It's a lot of damage to the psyche because you're always being told that you're not enough. But I, I did get very lucky in that I was fairly, I was discovered, so they say, because I, I started my professional career at 15. I had been acting, but both my parents had been actors in their younger years in New York City. Uh, but, you know, my mother had become a mother of three and my father became a restaurateur, but I should say it was in my blood. And uh, then I um, was doing all the school plays and I always got the leads. And so I knew, yeah, this is what I was gonna be doing. But my mother had the, um, she would read the, the trade paper called Backstage and sometimes we would do extra work and we'd go on auditions sometimes just for the fun. And one day she, went down for an open call in backstage for uh, a woman, uh, a Latina woman. And I said, you know, take my picture because maybe there'll be some extra work, which is the behind the screen, you know, the background work. And sure enough, they needed a, a 16 year old and all, there were 30 women of her age. And she said, you know, how about, you know, my, the, the cast director said, sorry, lady, we need an ingenue, they call it. And she said, how about this? And she said, that's, that's what we're looking for, bring her down. I was, I was after school scooping ice cream at my, my afternoon job and my mother called frantically to come down and I auditioned. And then I literally flew out from New York to Los Angeles the next day, screen tested with uh, Sean Penn, who is very well known. Um, but for me, it was not, you know, I was not that excited because I knew him from High Times at Ridgemont High, which was a very kind of, <laughs> his character was kind of a deadhead. But anyway, that's what acting's all about. Uh, I screen tested with him and the director is a very well-known director who has since passed Louis Mal, um, very well-known French director. So it was one of those crazy things where one day I was in my high school play, I had to cancel the high school play. I was on a set with incredible actors like Donald Sutherland and Jack Warden and Wallace Shawn and Christina Bransky and Sean Penn. And I was uh, now a professional actress. So I did the film, I came home, I went back to high school. And then about uh, four months later, uh, the a soap opera that I actually watched uh, called All My Children, which was also very popular at the time. Uh, I got an audition there for a part that I was really tailor made for. And um, I got that uh, job and basically, you know, finished high school and just continued into acting. Did that for three years, lost my job, which was, you know, like the, the downhill part. It's like all up, up, up. And then I lost my job. And then I did not, I saved my money. I was not responsible. I had done everything, you know, they checked the list of, you know, imp uh, immature teenager too much too fast and then I got to um, kind of start all over again I moved up to Los Angeles did some waitressing pounded the pavement uh, got rejected a lot and made my way you know through that process till I found voiceover acting so that that it was it was a wonderful Cinderella and then back to you know <laughs> the reality and then slowly back up uh, in the acting and then had about a six year overlap with voiceovers before I decided to completely let go of the on camera for the voiceovers. Phenomenal. I mean, you were, you were, I've seen your Sizzler reel, which I'm, I'm going to play now. And you, you are such, such a talented uh, actress. L let's see your, your, your camera uh, Sizzler reel now. It's very kind of you, Frankie, and your friends to do so much for us. You are very special. Yeah, well, when you've been doing this kind of stuff as long as I have, it's sort of become second nature, you know what I mean? I only hope I can express my gratitude. Well, we'll think of something. 
I'm pregnant with your baby. Mind if I ask you a question? I don't mind. How did you get yourself in, you know, in this condition? You don't know how it happens. I'd like you to solve a case. Normally I like a bigger challenge. Not this one. He was my father. Due to the fact that I was once grounded in high school, a jury of my peers will understand that I was traumatized and lashing out. I'm here for something else. I kind of have a thing for the colonel, but... You know that navel thing in the back of his neck? I don't know, I think I'd be disoriented. If he catches you here alone with me... Little Ramon, mi amigo Ramoncito, that's no problem. You like to live dangerously or what? It's only good that you... I really can't see very much, Kenny. Yeah, well, let me fix that for you. Oh, that's real nice of you, Kenny, but no thanks. I mean, I don't, I don't know you well enough for that, but thanks anyway. You're a real nice guy. Sorry. No, really, don't be sorry. I want to apologize for the jerks in this class. Thank you. Uh, Kate? Denise Bay. Dinner tonight? What's the matter? You, that's what... I mean, you're acting so much like Dallin, I don't know who you are anymore. I like Danny Amatulo. He was a cop. And the son of Dr. Ronald Shigeta. And my husband. And you killed him. That's what they say. I don't give a diddly squat who killed Max. Uh, is there anything at all about Max you'd like to tell me at this time? He was a pig. What if they try and pressure me into something? A decision? They won't. They know I can think for myself and that you're, uh... A mess. Right. Toshanika, Volcano Regar. Wesley Crusher of the Enterprise. You do not look as if you meet the age requirements. I'm legal. About a couple of months, maybe. What's the point? The point is... You've been working since you were 15. 14. I look old for my age. I just think that if you have something to say, something good to say, and you do, that you should say it so everyone can hear it. I wasn't sure what to think or feel, but now I know that he's for real. Taught us all to do our part, save the neighborhood, and... Hey, come on, what? Come on. Hey, what? Sing, sing it. it. Come on, babe. And stole my heart. Yeah! Duckman, the blood, the gore, the ritual execution. I'm titillated. Okay, so the transition from an, an, an actress to a voice actress, how did that come about? I have to say it was good old mom again. Uh, she was she was living out here in Los Angeles with me and she had uh, met a girl at the gym who worked at the gym who did voice or voice acting. And she said, you know, sweetheart, you have a great voice. You're an actress, you should be a voice actress. And I was, you know, this is back in the day that they were very mystique. You didn't even know what a voice actor was. And so, uh, but she pushed me. So I went and again, uh, took two years for me to get my first demo and, and uh, terrible version of it. So, but I, I studied it and basically it just, everything was the same, except now you don't, you're not seen. Now it's uh, commercials and animation and, but no more, you know, you're not tall enough or pretty enough or blonde enough or, because now it's all about the voice. Mm. And so when I started booking my first few jobs and, realizing that all my talent as an actress and my voice and my ability to tell stories, which I knew were fantastic. I knew I was talented, uh, but you know, and then the equation was taken out of what I looked like. I started booking and booking and booking and booking and all the skills that I had applied as an actress were being used now, but uh, I was released from the confines of, of you're not enough. It's because an actress, they really want, or an actor, they really want you to walk in being the part, right? They just want to visualize you. And so, so much of it's, you know, we assume was like, that doesn't person doesn't remind me of what I've written. So with voiceover, it's your imagination. As long as you can create 
something, you know, what they have in mind, or even better, you can do it. So I was liberated and I realized uh, that I, I was destined to be a voiceover actor because I was so much happier and so much more joyful and working more. And then um, I, like I said, I, you know, my therapist said to me one day that my mental health was going up in proportion to the amount of voiceovers I was doing. <laughs> oh, okay. okay. There's something to be about that. And I wanted to get married and I wanted to stay married. And again, the life of an actor is, as you know, Hollywood shows does not uh, lend itself you know, to going away with a handsome man for six weeks and then coming back to your husband, like, I'm back, you know. <laughs> I just, so I uh, made the very right decision and I decided to devote myself exclusively to acting around when I was 29 years old. And I've been doing it uh, ever since, so over 25 years and still married to the same man. And I have three children to, to and two dogs. <laughs> <laughs> one of whom just made a present. <laughs> Cue the dog. <laughs> <laughs> um, and so that was a decision that I really felt good about. And at the same time, I also, I also realized how much um, the same principles that I applied to become a great voiceover actor, I could start utilizing in my real life roles. And that's how this evolution of Give Great Voice came about. Fantastic. I want to come back to that. I mean, that's obviously the whole point of, uh, you know, our conversation because you're doing such phenomenal work there. But, you know, I'm, I'm, it's so refreshing what you are saying that, you know, you know, the challenges that you faced in, uh, in Hollywood. So it's not all glitz and glamour. I mean, there's hard work, there's lots of rejection. Uh, you know, it's, it's really tough going. And, uh, and, and it's also refreshing that you, that you, that you mentioned that, you know, you transition to voice acting, you're doing something that you are happier doing and your, 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 you know, your, your therapist actually backed that up, which is, which is phenomenal. Uh, I just want to show uh, the sizzler reel of some of the, the voice acting roles that you've played. Download commencing. I want this specimen and all the data prepared for transit to the Jedi Temple. The Chancellor said the tumor and data was to be sent directly to the medical facility on Coruscant, not the Jedi Temple. And it will get there. But after the Jedi have run an analysis on it first. I protest. I must personally deliver the tumor to the Chancellor as ordered. You can protest all you want. My word is final. Senor Dodgers, you must help us. Our people suffer under the boot of Hilgago. Such harsh talk from such a delicate fave. Capitan Dodgers! You forgot your hanky. Thanks. These things are more expensive than you'd think. This is the man who's made misery of our lives. Such harsh words from such a delicate face. He already used that. I... waited for this moment. I am a sniper. Waiting is my job. Never moving a muscle. Concentrating. <laughs> I am long shot. You cannot save me. This question is for Katie. Spell appliance. A, B, B. She said P, P. <laughs> <laughs> class, class, quiet. You may continue, Katie. My poor darling. Yes, I know he's found us, but I won't let him hurt you. I'll kill him first. Ivy, I know Dr. Young mutated these plants to produce venom. Yes, and I heard it through the grapevine the evil woman paid the price. <laughs> I need you to help me create an antidote. Why should I? Let Joker have his fun. He's such a nice guy. You smell like sweat and plasma burns. I like it. How long have we got to ourselves? You know, before duty calls, the world goes to hell, all that. Everything's an illusion. Your hopes, your friends, your life itself. All flash and no substance. You know how families spread out after the kids grow up. All systems are registering go, go, and go at headquarters, Bert. Hey, Bertie, don't even think about it. Me? I've got no shame. Download complete. 
Okay, coming to um, giving great voice. Tell, tell me how that came about, and and uh, you know what what drive or what drove you to actually uh, come up with the con- with the concept. Sure. So, it, of course, like everything, it's an evolution. It started out as one thing, and it's, it keeps evolving to become something more. Um, a lot of it came out of recognizing again that my happiness came out of this ability to know how to play. Uh, my roles really well as a voiceover actress by understanding the four questions that who am I in the scene? Who am I speaking to? What do I want? And how does my voice and tone support that intention? So I always use the example of the poisonous poison ivy. You know, she's she's the um, who the who. She's a DC villainous, eco-terrorist, shiro, complicated, um, but, but she's a seductress. And why is she a seductress? There's always a why, because her venom lies in her lips. So in mm-hmm. order to get her prey close, to, to kill them, she doesn't you know, fight this way, she gets them close. So that's the who. So who is she speaking to? Let's say her enemies, Batman's being one of them. What does she want? She needs to seduce him to get him close enough so she can kiss him and kill him. So if she was to say, Batman, come over here, he might be much more inclined than, Batman, come here! (laughs) So, right, that's a a repelling sound, more of an irritating sound, (laughs) an aggressive tone. So that's so clear. Every time we play as an actor, mom, compassionate, kind, CEO, inspiring, authoritative, uh, you know, motivating, I saw that there was, I I played it so well, these roles so well, that I thought aspirationally, how do I play my real life roles of mother and friend and sister and daughter? Because a lot of times, especially in life, we're reactionary, right? If I'm I'm in a bad mood, I have a tone, my husband has the tone, it's like, I always joke that my husband knows exactly how I feel about him as soon as I said his name. (laughs) Harvey, Harvey, Asher, (laughs) Asher, you know, it's like, doesn't matter what I say. The train's left the station. The conversation's on its way. The, 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 the reaction is out. So uh, as a voiceover actor, I started thinking and applying, you know, again, with emotional intelligence and self-awareness that I could change the outcome of my conversation by changing the tone, by thinking about my roles as a loving wife, compassionate, kind. Does that match up with how I'm speaking to my husband? Uh, you know, and you know, does that match up with how I'm speaking to you? If I said to you, Bilal, here I am, role of speaker, role of teacher, uh, to be motivating, to be inspiring, to be educating. Bilal, it's really nice to be with you and I'm so excited to, to share this information with your students. <laughs> <laughs> That doesn't really support my role, does it? Yeah, yeah. So I started applying these same principles and I wanted to teach people because I'm a voiceover actor and I'm an actress. I've used this beautiful instrument. So to give great voice at its essence means to be able to move, touch, and inspire and impact with our voices by understanding the four questions. Who am I? Who am I speaking to? What do I want? What's the success of this particular scene for both parties? And how does my voice and tone support it? Mm-hmm. So that's how Give Great Voice, it evolved more for the superficial, the up speak, up speak, up speak, bumbling, 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 to more of this holistic triumvirate. How do we give great voice to ourselves to motivate our own selves and to program for success? How do we give it in our professional lives to fulfill our aspirations and our goals to succeed? And how do we give it to deepen relationships that matter to us? Mm. Because when Mm. we give great voice at its best, it's a gift to the speaker, to the receiver, and all those who witness it. Phenomenal. My aspiration that I want to teach this skill, this art of confident, considerate communication to the world. 
You know, I, I can actually relate to that because as we put our students out, we put them out on, on interviews. And one of the things that, that, that regularly comes back is, you know, we put out a student that is more talented versus one that's less talented. And the interviewer would come back to us and say, well, you know, we, we hired the student that we know is less talented for the simple reason that they spoke with that level of confidence and, and authority and the more talented student actually did themselves down by not uh, being right. confident. Yeah. That's right. That's right. And this, is, this is again why I love reaching young people because they're, they're really tremendously at a disadvantage simply because they're growing up without the need to speak the way we did in the old days when we only had telephones and only was on the, on the phone and there were computers, we all had to communicate for hours and hours and hours and hours. And, and that was my mandate when I, when I did my TEDx talk was to, excuse me, uh, was to uh, uh, basically share with the world this uh, ability to communicate in these simple, with these simple tips because I really wanted to get it out to, to kids and young people um, based on my fun background that they might enjoy, you know, Sniper Wolf from Metal Gear Solid and Poison Ivy and Shaq T from The Clone Wars and, and listen to what I have to say uh, framed in this novelty of being a voiceover actor, but to get them to feel more confident in their communication uh, when maybe again, it's not as, as natural to them because they text and emoji and Snapchat and Instagram. And so the, on a deeper level, my mandate is to really capture the youth that their voices do matter and they deserve to be heard. And how can they feel more confident by ch in channeling their inner superheroes so they can convey their message with more passion and get that interview and get the job and get the, mo uh, the uh, but, but yeah, you can be the greatest programmer in the world now, but if you can't tell your story and you can't engage, you're not going to get as far as those that can. 100%. I'm actually going to share the link to your TED Talk uh, below this video. So whoever, you know, those that are interested can have a look at it. I actually highly recommend people to watch it. It's, it's very, very uh, educational, really awesome stuff. Now, uh, how, if somebody's interested, right, or I, I think you do, uh, you do offer a free consultation also. If somebody is interested, how do they, how do they get in touch with you? Yes, um, so I, I'm, I'm happy to share um, through LinkedIn or uh, they can go to my website, Give Great Voice or Tasia Valenza, and I'm happy to do a 15 minute consultation. And I'm, I'm also gonna be working on um, my actual a 30 day challenge coming up November 2nd, it will be a Give Great Voice challenge, which is another fun way because it's gonna be a community and we're gonna support, I'm gonna teach in little incremental chunks how to learn to give nice. great voice close to ourselves. Yeah, so this is very exciting because I just got yeah. this opportunity. So I teach one-on-one, -on -one, but of course it can be cost prohibitive um, to, to many students, especially. Um, but for a month, uh, this webinar, it's gonna be a, a quest and a journey together and little bite-sized chunks of how to gain this confidence over time. And then I also teach uh, animation classes and classes uh, through different communities. But the best way to reach out to me is uh, through LinkedIn or also um, at uh, TejaValenza.com, which is, they can see my all my voiceover stuff, or if they can't remember, give great voice and email me. I'd be happy to speak with them. But yes, my my, my passion is to get this message out. And of course, if they follow me on Instagram and all my social media, I'm always sharing little tips there and tips there. So a student can get going just by watching the TED Talk, watching all my content. And then of course, if they wanna join this Give Great Voice Challenge coming up, a tremendous way to, to start implementing uh, these ideas. And because and, you know, it's, they're simple, but of course you want to just really get your head inside the idea that you're now a voiceover actor in your own life. And how can you intentionalize your tone uh, whenever you're going to, to you know, need to speak with that confidence. So and I'm, I'm, I'm so happy to support.
No, and I'm going to share the links to your uh, your social channels uh, you know, below this video. Now, there's also an app, right? There's your Haven app which you know after um having watched your your ted talks i actually downloaded that and i'm and i i can i can speak for the app you know it's really great it's really phenomenal it's all about um well for me what i'm getting out of it it's it's the self speak it's it's what you say to yourself and uh you know how you subconsciously uh, can give yourself negative or positive uh, uh messages and that that has an effect on how you interact with the world around you so tell us more about the app how did it come around and what's the overall vision of the of the app sure so again you know right place right time synchronicity it was something uh i was supposed to be a, just a voiceover artist for this affirmation meditation app slash anonymous chat room to support uh, issues. I, when I saw what they were doing, I was so taken because I, they had some pretty bad affirmations and not very much content. I was like, you know, I live this, I believe in this. Can I become a partner and I'll forego the money? And they said, yes. Uh, again, you know, sometimes just taking bold action, <laughs> right Absolutely. timing. So yeah. um, I was able to co-write all the masteries and they're broken down into leadership, um, wealth, health, 10 minutes in the vein of calm and headspace, which every, uh, very few people are familiar with. And I uh, basically got a chance to write my, my intentions and then share them verbally. And so the goal there is again, how do we give great voice to ourselves? Most people will tear themselves down before they'll build themselves up. We're somehow, we're somehow much more comfortable that it's easy to say, oh, that old dress or thanks, but you know, really, I'm, it's just, I'm a loser, an idiot, stupid. You know, even how we talk to ourselves in the, you know, privacy, even if we're not saying it out loud, we're on a cycle. And I, mm -hmm. I like in that, the, of the metaphor of learning to speak the language of self-love, which is a foreign language to most people. Yes, yes. Most people don't. And I love to give permission to all my clients and all my students that not only is it necessary, but it's, it's, it's the only way that you can then have the real bandwidth to go out into the world and do it authentically as opposed to faking it, right? You, you, get, you can't go in the morning like, oh, I'm a loser, I'm such an idiot, I'm an imposter, will they know me? Hello. <laughs> I mean, you can, but you're, you're, you know, there's a disconnect. Yeah. And you won't have so much more when you say, I, I'm, I'm amazing. I'm going to kill it today. I can't wait to go into this interview and share that, that excitement. That, that's what they feel. They feel like if you feel good about yourself, people want to be around people that feel good. They want to be around that. That's a lecture. Our emotions are contagious, mm, mm, mm. both good and bad. So to give great voice is to learn the language of self-love. And the other piece is that unfortunately, most of our thoughts, there are 60 to 70,000 thoughts a day downloading unchecked, which is the science behind it, or more, <laughs> who knew? Those thoughts are 80% negative from the day before and the year before and the year before and the year before. And I, I, the metaphor of the hard drive is our brain and it's you it's zero to seven that we're programmed zero to seven years old and we're running all the stuff yeah all the limbic all the stuff that unfortunately when we were you know I'll, I'll, the, i'm a parent so I, I take it that you know i have three children and i love them and i started sending them to ther therapy early so that in case anything <laughs> i messed up <laughs> they would have it because you know we're humans we make we make mistakes mm -hmm. A lot of this programming lives and cycles through and only by becoming aware and providing a software update through this override it's over and thoughts are too fast they're too furious and the old ones go so you need to override it with the language to speak the like can you learn french in your head no you have to can speak it yes mm. so affirmations are a great way to reprogram to update the software because would you run a program that's 40 years old or 20 years old? No. I and mean, would you run a, a computer? Would it run effectively? Mm, no, not at all. So you must reaffirm and re-update. It's awkward, but is it learning a language? Awkward at first. It, it is. <laughs> and then, it is. then it becomes a little bit more proficient. And then one day you're fluent in it. So uh, whatever you say, I mean, affirmations aren't new. They mm. don't work if you just say them, I love myself. No, you don't. 
I believe in myself. No, no, no. You have to say it again with intention and conviction. And yeah. in a state of alpha, in a state of relaxation, as in a meditation, you're more receptive. 100%. And, and it, it kind of settles in a, a lot more. I mean, it's, it's, it's quite a challenging, it's a daunting task. You're basically reprogramming what we call the firmware of your, of your entire brain. And that's, that's quite a challenge. It is. But, but, but I will tell you that if you do it with consistency and when you do it with openness, I have clients that within a week, they're like, I had no idea. I could feel so good. I had no idea because nobody ever gave them permission yeah. to say lovely things. I want people to talk out loud to themselves all the time in the privacy, <laughs> but only nicely, <laughs> only nicely. And you can be the confidence coach, like, yeah, you're going to rock this. Or I believe in myself, or I'm amazing, or I'm powerful. And of course, you can use your body language to support that through power posing, which uh, a science, again, shows that if you stand in this V for victory or um the superman wonder woman pose mm -hmm. two minutes you hack your biology and you raise your testosterone which is your um power hormone and confidence hormone and you lower your cortisol levels which mm -hmm. is your stress hormone. this was made famous by amy cuddy in a ted talk again i recommend my ted talk amy cuddy's ted talk uh, hers has like 50 million views because she's a harvard professor that showed that this, these, this body language of the apes and the lions and the, and the V for victory, that even blind runners, when they cross the finish line, mm -hmm. do, says to your body, I deserve to be here. I own my space. As opposed to, I don't, I'm nothing. And by the way, guess what, guess what this is? That's you looking at your cell phone. Yeah, yeah. What are we doing? It's almost like you're covering it. It's a... Uh very negative oh, wow that's correct so that so un unwittingly with this new science we're, we're 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 bringing more stress and diminishing ourselves so if you find yourself doing this another tip please spend two minutes expanding every Get day out. because we're hmm. we're not only hurting ourselves uh, mentally but we're literally releasing more um stress hormones and hmm. diminishing hmm. Like right, like right before your interview, what are, what are most people doing? They, they're sitting in, yeah. So that would be again, you know, to give great voice, you need to give great body language. Nine, over 90% of our communication is nonverbal. Mm. So it's not the words, it's the tone, it's the body language, it's the smile. It's the, I'm genuine. But again, a genuine smile comes from, I'm gonna rock this today. I believe in myself, I love myself. I am this, I deserve this job. I am worthy. Because at, at its essence, that's what it comes down to. At the bottom, bottom, am I worthy? Yes, you are. And you deserve it. But you must program yourself for this because whatever you say after I am or I have consistently and with conviction tells your future. Absolutely. And if you don't believe it, no one else is going to believe it. No. And it's just, it's difficult, but it's such a simple tool. And the app is again, and just, you know, to listen seven days in a row and start saying it, it's free. And then I also recommend, you know, immersing yourself in this love language, post-it notes, wherever you can find them on your phone. Hello, gorgeous. You know, <laughs> it's, it's a new way of thinking. But once people adopt it, it feels so wonderful because you ha you feel better. And yeah. Your energy changes and people respond to you differently. And, you know, from there, you can succeed at your dreams so much easier. You can overcome those obstacles because you're not saying to yourself, I'll never, I'm a loser, I'll never make it. You say, that's okay. Today we, we, we had a challenge, but we can do it again tomorrow. Or that was rough. And here's the compassionate companion. You get to be your own best friend because let's face it, we would never speak to our best friends the way we speak to ourselves. That's actually very true. And it seems, it feels weird at first, but yeah. it only gets easier, right? It's a, it's, <laughs> any language that you're learning feels weird at first. Yeah, yeah. It does get easier the more you do. And once you start feeling like, and you, you could do it secretly. You could do it in the mirror alone, you know? 
I have affirmations that I have on my mirror. I say them every day. Um, I'm happy to send that to you. You know, today is an incredible day. Success, prosperity, and abundance in many different forms have naturally, I've memorized it, but I don't let, the, I don't let myself go in through the, to the bathroom and just look at it. Because I know I could just be like, oh, I've said this a million times. I get it. I force myself because I know that the act of affirming it out loud is concretizing it yet again. And it programs me to start my day on a better note than if I just get on the phone and start getting incredible anxiety because of the news and the cycle. I mean, I, I, I generally don't go to my phone and say, wow, this is great. <laughs> but if I go to the bathroom and I start, uh, I'm on the ear, start saying, I am amazing, I am healthy, I am wealthy, your brain starts supporting whatever your messaging is. So if you started out on a good note, it is going to be a lot more empowered than if you, you know, the world is very challenging right now. Yeah. We, need, yeah. we need love and support and who better to start that than ourselves. Mm. And then we can rock our roles, daughter, friend, sister, son, uh, you know, in, in, uh, co courageous, competent candidate. Then if we're coming always from anxiety, fear, lack. Mm -hmm. And, you know, it's like they say, you can't really love others if you don't love yourself. That's right. That's what they say. But again, what does that mean? Mm -hmm. well, now it means you get to talk to yourself really nicely. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, you get to talk. And by the way, I looked up what an affirmation is, which I did not know until I did. Uh, I recorded and wrote these uh, for Haven. Do you know what an affirmation actually is? Oh, what is it? I thought it was a present positive statement. Yeah, yeah. It's actually uh, the definition in, in Webster says that it's whatever you affirm to be. So the affirmation is what you affirm it, a statement to be either negative or positive. Or positive. It's yeah. not, it's neutral. Mm. So what do we affirm? And what do we want to affirm? By proxy default, many of us are affirming negatively every day. But an affirmation is, in other words, like I still have scary, anxious thoughts. But now, as opposed to following it down the rabbit hole, I'm like, oh my gosh, this is going to happen. And then it's going to, and they're going to know. And I'm, uh, now it's like, oh, I stop myself and I say, wow, that is a scary thought I'm having right now. It's a thought, and in this moment, I am okay, and I love myself, and I believe myself. Maybe I need to accept and forgive myself, but I am okay. And now in that, I am amazing, and I love myself, and I can do anything I set my mind to, and I am valuable. You know, again, but, but I, 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 I now have a technique and a hack and a tool that allows me not to not have them completely, but to not follow them and just think that I am my thoughts. I now know that my thoughts are something, <laughs> but they're not me. I used to not, not separate them. I just thought that, you know, I was thinking all the time. Now I catch myself, in a, you know, exercising, think, you know, I used to catch myself in exercise class. I have had 20,000 thoughts in the last 10 minutes and barely noticed that I would, you know, right, we drive, we get somewhere, we're like, mm -hmm. how did I get here? We were thinking the whole time. Mindfulness is, I feel my hands on the wheel. I notice how I'm turning them. Most people don't, <laughs> that's why we're learning mindfulness all the time. Mindfulness yeah. is completely, it's wonderful. Very rare that we could do it at all. The soapy dishes are cold. I feel the wet, nobody's doing that. We're, <laughs> we're thinking. We are on autopilot. <laughs> Right. But, but those autopilot thoughts, how many of them are wonderful, empowering thoughts? Not many, unfortunately. <laughs> yeah. so now I'd, I'd like to give the hack that we can give great voice to ourselves and start recognizing and rewiring and reprogramming and it will change us and then it will change our outcomes and we will get those jobs and we will get those investments and we will get more people around us that we want that lift us higher instead of pull us down because we'll be those people. Mm. And energetically, mm. we are drawn to those that we are like, yes? Yeah, 100%. So give, 
Yeah, so Give Great Voice starts with the self, then we have the bandwidth, and then we go out, we play those roles better. And then we, again, think, you know, before we speak to our children, maybe take a breath, say something kind to myself. Then before I snip at them, you know, we have much more choice as opposed mm -hmm. to just running on autopilot in our lives and not necessarily getting the outcomes that ultimately we want and then cycling in that negative shit. Excuse my French. <laughs> <laughs> I did it again. And that's not even French. Yeah. Uh, but you know, so it, it really is a way to, to reprogram for success. And I love my, my greatest wish is that everyone should use the, the vernacular. Who did I give great voice to today, including myself? That is, that is golden. I mean, if everybody in the world would, would be able to affirm that the positive thoughts the way that you do, this world would be such a different place, really, such a different place. Well, it's my goal to get as many with your help. <laughs> and believe me, it's been a process for me. You know, I've lived a long time. But my children, you know, I would say to any parent, especially when you get them young, you can, if you start them young, when they still have that freedom of like, let's say, so who's your favorite superhero? And let's say how powerful we are today. You know, you're Batman, I'm Superman. Stand in the mirror, let's do our Superman poses and say, I am amazing, I love myself. You're gonna get children that start young and believing this and program for success. So I, it is something, oh, but you know, again, you change, people will change when you change around yourself. Sometimes people, you know, you can't let's say, we're all going to affirm today. My teenagers, you know, like, yeah, okay, mom, thanks for that. Um, but, <laughs> but, they, but they, you know, they grew up hearing me do it. You know, I, I had an affirmation for voiceover jobs, you know, like I see the number 222 and I would go and I am the number one female voiceover artist in the United States. So they grew up saying, mommy, 222. So again, you know, they, 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 they understand that this is something that I'm very passionate about. And then the TED talk again, uh, I break it down the four questions. I talk about playing the role of the co courageous, confident candidate and breathing, empowering, affirming dress, which is B, the acronym, so people can utilize these tools. So it is my goal and wish to make it rather simple and get people on the path to having more love, more compassion, more kindness for themselves and for all whom they deal, uh, they interact with and, and have more passion and more excitement and utilize their tools, these beautiful instruments of communication to, to have an incredible life. Phenomenal. You know, part of the self-speak is not just I love myself, but I respect myself and I deserve to be heard. You know, our voices are so powerful and many voices feel like they are diminished, right? Many of us don't feel like our voices deserve to be heard. Our metaphorical voices, our voice voices. And so one of the powerful affirmations is, I deserve to be heard. I respect myself. I believe in myself and my voice matters. And when we say that enough, again, with conviction and intention, the world starts treating us differently because we hold ourselves differently because we believe that we deserve to be heard and ultimately that is at its core as a human being, our essence of what we need. Everyone wants to feel heard and understood. And if you believe it, it you give that message to the world and it shows in your actions, in your demeanor, in your, in your voice, in every, every aspect of, your, of the message and signals that you put out. Exactly, so it's not just love, it's love at its core and respect. And respect. And I respect others, but again, I want people to have these conversations out loud, mm. out loud, no longer in their head, quietly in your car, in your bathroom, but just, you know, start recognizing, you know, God, what are the thoughts that I'm thinking right now? There are a lot of negative thoughts, but no, just as if you like, you know, you, you press the software update on your computer. Oh, I need a software update. I need a software update. <laughs> and, 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 you know, some people that's ridiculous. I don't, you know, that, how is that going to help me? You know, think about what everybody has the aspirations. I've got to succeed and I want to make this much money. But then, there, you know, are you, are you supporting that role? Are you rocking your role? 
I love this. Mm -hmm. Are you rocking your roll? Rocking. It's a play on rock and roll. <laughs> That's right. Are you yeah. rocking your roll? Well, you get to rock it when you feel more confident, when you mm -hmm. feel more in charge, when you feel more powerful. Um, so does putting yourself down serve your role? So you can be very methodical about it. You don't have to be like, ooey, ooey, airy, fairy. Does it serve my role as entrepreneur, as, as, as student, as courageous, competent candidate to get this job if I'm negatively speaking to myself? Not really, so don't do it. <laughs> do what serves the role. So I, you, know, you can make it very pragmatic why you need to do this. It's yeah. not ooey, airy, fairy. It's literally rocking a role getting that job if you're the best programmer or if you're not the best programmer, but you can still tell a great story and you are trustworthy. I'll leave you this another story. They did a survey with interns for the summer. This was in Amy Cuddy's book, Presence, uh, that they, you know, most people identify at its best either confident, trustworthy. And if you get both, like, whoa, you're really great. But people tend to fall into the different categories. So they, they, tested these interns and they studied them and at the end to see who got asked to get to stay, who got the job offer. Who guess who got the job offers? The ones that trustworthy ones, not the competent ones. Yes. And why is that? Why is that? Because trustworthy comes through, it's positive, it's I it's I, I'm willing to learn. Competent was so busy being confident, they never asked for help, they never socially engaged, they didn't come off as friendly. They were mm -hmm. so busy being confident. So you see, trustworthy and warm and open and friendly, plus talent and the willingness to learn can get you much further than competent, but no interpersonal skills. Mm -hmm. That's such a valuable lesson for all of us. I mean, for young people as well as the ones like us that are more seasoned. You know, I've been in business so many years and, you know, ultimately, it's the trust. If people feel they can trust you, they will do business with you. Otherwise, uh, they, they won't. It's as simple as that. Absolutely. And, and a warm smile and open body language and a kind you know, word and warmth, that is the first way that we engage with trust. Yeah, that's, that's so true. Absolutely. Tija, unfortunately, we, we, I mean, I'm really enjoying this, but we, we are out of time. I think you've given us so much, not just to think about, but so much that we can, we can start doing immediately. Uh, actions, you know, easy, easy action steps. Easy, easy action steps. I thank you so much. So really, I really appreciate you taking the time out to, uh, to talk to us and to share some of your wisdom. It's really, really such... Uh, amazing stuff. I definitely am a believer and I'm going to, you know, try and get as many of our students as possible on your, uh, on your challenge. And uh, we'll definitely share the links uh, below this video. Thanks a lot. Once again, it's been such an, a pleasure talking to you once again. I, I appreciate it so much. And I, I, I love that you're trying to get these to your students because again, they are the, they are the future. Well, and I, it makes me so happy to have your, your ambassadorship to get it out to more people because that will help change the world. Fantastic. It will. And I believe that. Thanks a lot.